Well, uh, welcome everyone. It's uh, it's really a, an honor and a, a pleasure, a delight to be with you all today in this this community. It's really been amazing over the last few years to see what all you and, and Klaus I know is on the call today, um, Jose, Ahmad, many of you just contributing and bringing forth uh, from the community. So I'm, I'm one of you all, I'm a practitioner. And so I'm just going to be sharing some of the, the thoughts I have. I don't know if any of the, any of my thoughts are, is unique. Uh, it's really, I'm, I'm, I compile, combine, uh, remix, refactor the work of other people. And so I think a lot of us probably do that, but I just want to give credit to those of uh, you who've gone before, you continue to learn as I invited people earlier. If, you, if you've um, got better language for some of the stuff, updated language, new terms, uh, if, I, if I say something that's like, yeah, we, we've got a better thing for that now, uh, feel free to, to jump in. Uh, I'm, I'm not precious about this. Uh, I'm just, again, alongside you all on the journey, learning, sharing. And so I invite anyone to, to jump in um, together. So anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be here. Metrics at every flight level. Uh, basically, I'm going to be talking about how this concept or these concepts um, enable managed evolution. So as opposed to revolution, uh, man we talk about managed evolution. So um, here we go. Okay. There we go. Uh, so the Agile transformation, uh, you've probably uncovered this, this concept, experienced it, and uh, I think it takes different forms. But uh, a lot of times in my experience, it, there's, there's this concept of uh, what I call the, the big picture up front. Uh, it's kind of like big design up front, big picture up front, uh, whether it comes from a particular scaling framework or group or just maybe a, a big consultancy that's, that's been brought in to do something with the Agile transformation to tell people what they should do. Uh, I've, I've been a consultant, so I, I, I don't speak, well, I may speak, well, anyway, I've been a consultant and I've, I've done this before myself. And, and so it's kind of like this. I don't know if anyone actually is calling from France, knows France, but has anyone seen this building? This is the Pleasure Tower. Uh, you probably haven't because it, it doesn't really exist, <laughs> uh, but it looks really cool. I mean, you can, you could, I mean, it's, it's bigger than the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, um, and it, you can drive all the way up. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It looks great on paper. It looks great on, on a slide. Uh, the unfortunate thing is for most of us who have to deal with the reality of, of work, it's not quite so easy. And so um, there's, there's a, more often what happens is something like this. This is actually, it looks like ruins of a, of, of a church, um, but this church is actually never built. Uh, what you see here is the extent of it. Uh, so there was, this is in the, uh, Bermuda and they had, they had the church burned down. So they had a, a, a big coming together. Everybody, let's plan, let's make it an even bigger, a more amazing uh, church. And they got all the plans together a, and they started building and they ran out of money. And so this is what, what was left, basically. I think this happens a lot in my experience in different places. Uh, there's a big plan. Someone goes away, leaves the plan behind, and it doesn't really end up coming to fruition. People run out of money. People run out of patience. People leave. Uh, I think you all know what happens. So, um, so we need a better way to do this. You know, this big picture up front, this big design up front. It's kind of like it works on my box at the organization level, right? Uh, it doesn't really translate. So we need, we need a way to, what I call healthily refactor our organizations rather than like a big design, big, big picture approach to things. So uh, the alternative I'm proposing is basically this. So it really leverages, we think about uh, flight levels. There's, there's three sub areas of, of concern here. Flight levels, uh, I think many of you hopefully know what flight levels is. I'm, I'm gonna review that just a little bit. The concept of leadership at every level. And then uh, what I, I, I've called the metrics cube. Or, um, it's kind of a three dimensional way to look at, at metrics. So flight levels, quick review. And again, I uh, invite anyone to jump in, correct anything, add to, augment. Uh, 
thinking model that helps you find out where in an organization you have to do what in order to achieve the results you want. So uh, that's, that's from Klaus in his book. Hopefully you've read that. And it's, it has to do with this idea of leverage. Uh, and I've, I've experienced this myself. You know, long ago, starting out doing agile coaching, uh, we think about uh, agile teams. It's great, um, great place. This is not to say we don't coach or work with agile teams, but there's the point is that there's leverage uh, higher up. And we think about value streams or end to end coordination level, and then of course, strategy. So, really, how do we create coherence between all three of these levels? And that's, of course, the, the beauty of, of flight levels. All right. So, uh, as you probably have come across this quote, it's not about having many agile teams. It's really about having the agile interactions between the teams and even higher up understanding what is our purpose, what is our strategy, how we, how we work together. Uh, and so oftentimes we see basically the definition of agile is this little bit in the middle here. You've probably seen more, maybe fruitier language to describe the, we are so freaking agile, but uh, you get the idea. So flight levels give us a way to see the organization um, at different levels different breadth of view and different level of detail. So the higher up we go, the wider our, our breadth of view, less detail. All right, so uh, using the, the, the metaphors of the, the airplane, the bird and a butterfly, you can see things in great detail, at the lowest level, um, but we need to be able to connect these things. And that's, the, that's one of the, the lovely things about flight levels for me is creating connection, creating coherence between these things. Okay, next, uh, next concept is leadership at every level. So those of you who are familiar with the Kanban method, um, other places, I, I know the idea of leader, leader culture is big in David Marquet's work, for example. Um, so this idea that alignment and autonomy are opposites, it's a, it's a false choice. We really like to think of them as two different types of um, concerns and so it's possible to have high alignment and high autonomy or vice versa. And so we think about organizational culture, we think about somewhere in the mix of these two, these two uh, spectrums. So um, what you really wanna aim for the upper right where we have high alignment and high autonomy. Those are the innovative collaborative types of organizations we all seek to be. So I've overlaid the, concepts of flight levels on here just as how I've experienced things. So in the authoritarian conformist organization where there's high alignment but perhaps low autonomy, really there's there's not distinguishing uh, characteristics of, among all of these things. So there's there's micromanagement, for example. So we're confusing the concerns of, of strategy and, and coordination if it even exists uh, with the, the operational level. Uh, in the Lower right-hand corner, the entrepreneurial chaotic, maybe a startup or even a large organization where there's lots of stuff going on and you realize, oh, there's people over there doing that too. We have no connection. We have no awareness to what our greater purpose is. We're just doing work. Uh, it can feel like all it is is operational concerns. There's probably someone in the organization doing strategy. There's probably someone thinking about coordination, um, but it's, it really feels like, and it's kind of the spirit of the organization is just everybody doing operational stuff. Um, and so it looks like that level. To get it right, right, and have everyone doing the right level of work, it really it requires us understanding which of these things is 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 which. Um, okay. Right. So we're talking about metrics today, and so part of the, the the patterns I've seen in organizations that are depicted in these quadrants, it. it the focus is on these types of, of activities, these kinds of, of measurements and these kind of behaviors. So um, a lot of activity oriented metrics, uh, doing stuff, compliance, standardization, even standardization without really understanding the why. Why do we need to standardize? Uh, do we need to have everybody working in two week sprints or is it okay to have some people doing uh, lots of different things that work for them? Um, focus on costs and utilization. In the lower right-hand corner, we have a lot of stuff. And, and again, we talk about work in progress. We see maybe work in progress if it does exist, work in progress limits or awareness at local team levels, operational levels, but there's no way to see 
organizational work, system work, system level work in progress. Uh, we might have lots of boards, Kanban boards, but really they're not terribly linked together. Uh, there's really no connection. And so again, we wanna aim for things that are connected where all of our work is really connected to the highest level of strategy. And that's what we, we can aim for in the uh, upper right hand corner. Okay, so I mentioned Kanban method. We wanna encourage acts of leadership at every level from the individual contributor to senior management. And so I turned the, the, the traditional hier organizational hierarchy upside down a bit here, just to say, uh, this is what it really should feel like. Uh, in the first example, we're a leader follower culture. We're asking for permission. We're waiting for permission. We're waiting for guidance. People are not acting autonomously. They're, they don't have a level of empowerment or a degree of um, being able to do things in freedom, work in freedom. Um, slow, um, fear, these things characterize a leader follow culture, a lack of action. Whereas in leader culture, we really want to, and, and again, it's not necessarily related to titles and positions, but really the, the spirit and the, the role that these different leaders are playing so that everyone can act in freedom that's aligned to greater purpose. So, so many teams I work with over the years, they do great work and yet they, they don't have a feeling of accomplishment or meaning or, or connectedness. And it's because we, we don't get this right. We, our leaders are, are not working at the right level. And so part of this is really helping people understand where they can provide the most leverage, but also provide the, the freedom and the connectedness for people to work autonomously toward that aligned autonomy. Uh, and so I, I really quite like this, this decision filter, the idea, if you can do something about it, do it. You don't have to ask for permission. It's kind of like this, the second one, intent-based leadership. I, I mentioned David Marquet, if you want to learn more there. And then this idea of experiment-based uh, mindset, trying something, it's better to try something, even if you fail and learn from it. Um, but this is what allows us to talk about business agility, about going fast, uh, keeping up with the speed of, of uh, the world, different things. Um, this is this is really the only way it can happen. Um, if, you're, if we're working in uh, a lack of psychological safety, a fear-based culture, this is these are not going to. We're going to be dinosaur organizations. Okay, and the third the third bit is this rubrics rubrics cube of metrics, and so the first two dimensions are these. So depending on your perspective. All right, some people talk about uh, the internal perspective, building the thing right, uh, external being build the right thing. What is the customer value? Are you fit for purpose in the eyes of your customer? That would be the external view. The delivery aspect is, is the how and the what. A lot of times we focus on the what without realizing that our customers care about the how just as, almost as much as they care about the what. Um, whether it's uh, going out for dinner, uh, having your car repaired, or building software, building systems, uh, how you do it, whether it's keeping promises, telling people um, that what, when to expect things in a reasonable uh, manner, how you treat them, uh, those, those things matter just as, as much as, as the what. So those two dimensions then create uh, something like this. So we might think of different categories of metrics to be aware of. So. Uh, in, in shorthand, these concerns are things like, is our team healthy? So think about the internal view, retrospection, for example, uh, but also the external view. Um, do, our, do our customers view our service delivery as fit for its purpose? Of course, is our product fit for its purpose? Do we love this product? Do we use it? Uh, is it meeting our needs? And then the internal view, of course, from product uh, standpoint is, is our product healthy? And then some metrics that might be associated with these, these concerns. So if you want to take a moment to kind of look at these, just to say, where, where is it? Do we have coverage, so to speak, metrics coverage in all these areas? Are there areas that we tend to focus on more than the other? Combining those two dimensions then with a third dimension, of course, flight levels, then we can think of each of these things having um, a connection or coherence throughout the organization. And so operational, yes, but what does it mean to look at these concerns from a coordination standpoint and then of course strategy standpoint? So combining all three, 
um, we think of the perspective, the delivery aspect, the, the service and product, and then the flight level. Right. So I'm just going to keep going quickly because I, I want to keep time for for the uh, for questions and and maybe answers. Right. So just looking at it from a three dimensional view, uh, we can kind of think of some examples here. So at a at a team level, we might be concerned with code coverage, being time to restore some of these internal health things. Um, how does that impact our end to end delivery time? But right? that's more of a end to end value stream coordination concern. We might have strategy concerns, right? So the idea of, of having these three dimensions connected through a lens of flight levels allows us to have coherence. So for example, you might uh, have a strategy to really improve our employee experience, right? Everybody's talking about uh, the great resignation, the great you know, job changes. Maybe some of you have changed jobs in the last couple of years. It's, it's an important strategy, right? How do we keep our great people? How do we engage people? Not just keep them, but have them engaged. That's a good strategy for an organization. So um, we might have that as an organizational concern, strategy. We're gonna invest in people, experience, et cetera. How do we connect that all the way down to the team level, the operational level? So again, using these, these metrics at every level, using flight levels can help us do that. By the way, this works really well with the X matrix. I don't know if any of you use X matrix, do strategy deployment work. Uh, I know Carl Scotland, many of you know uh, his work. Uh, he talks a lot about the X matrix. It really pairs nicely. I, I'm thinking about Klaus and his Italian dinner tonight. It pairs nicely with, with this, this concept of flight levels and the flight level, uh, different metrics at every level. Okay. Um, so. Here's some of the questions I've, I've uncovered over the years. You know, people are asking, and this is where it's not done well. It really, um, so this is where these levels are confused and people are working at, at the wrong level or their the executives are kind of too far down into the operational level. So separate out these concerns, executives and managers have an important role to play. It's usually not where they're playing at the, at the time. So, you know, you get questions like these, you know, looking at why is team A's velocity lower than team B's? How many, Agile teams are that that goes back to that, you know, we're, we're doing um, metrics that about that, that are more output based as opposed to outcome based. And then stuff at the, at the team level, when they're disconnected from strategy, when they're disconnected with end to end optimization, these are the kind of concerns that teams have. And these are really not appropriate either. And so um, I really like this quote, maybe you know this, maybe you know the author. A leader who believes that he can make a positive difference through continual personal interventions is usually deluding himself. He thereby takes over things other people uh, are supposed to be doing, effectively dispensing with their efforts, and multiplies his own tasks to such an extent that he can no longer carry them all out. This happened. This is a leadership pattern where people get promoted because they do things well at an individual contributor level, and they don't have the skill or the, maybe the, the mental model as we have with flight levels to be able to see how is my behavior needing to change. Uh, based on what my, my role is, what my position is. That person quickly becomes overburdened. That person also strips other people who have lots of talents, latent competencies from being able to contribute. There's so many people, I think, in our organizations who have amazing things to bring and we, we remove them or we, we take away their ability to impact the organization because of this kind of behavior. Uh, and then finally, uh, the demands made on a senior commander, senior manager, you might say, are severe enough as it is, it's far more important that the person at the top retains a clear picture of the overall situation and whether a particular thing is done this way or that. So uh, lest you think this is like the wisdom of from modern people like Klaus, this is actually quite old. This is, uh, this is we're getting on 200 years of wisdom from uh, von Moltke. So anyway, this, is, this has been happening. This is an organizational pattern. It's probably more extreme now. Just to be aware of people and helping leaders work at the right level. Right, so connecting these metrics uh, and keeping leadership focused on the, on the areas of concern that really the organization needs them to be working at, um, thinking about the strategy, making that clear. And I've seen it time and time again where, where people wanna do the right thing. They wanna use their energy to do amazing things. I think there, there's a great example um, from the book, um, Primed to Perform. It talks about, uh, this is not even a software example. It's, it's from the Ritz-Carlton hotel chain. 
And the, the Ritz-Carlton, they have a, a mission statement. It's something like a first class guest experience for everyone, something like this. But everyone knows about it, but it also everyone is empowered to do something about it, uh, namely in the form of individual budgets. So uh, the story goes that there was a, a, a ho- one of their hotels, I think it was on a beachfront, and one of the waiters observed that a lot of the guests would go to the beach and have uh, a you know, sunset dinner. Um, there was a, a, a couple guests, I don't know if they were a, a frequent guest or they were staying long term, but one of the people, I don't know if it was the wife or the husband, was in a wheelchair. And so they couldn't go, they couldn't access the beach essentially and have, have a dinner. So uh, this employee had, because he had his own budget, he, he knew the strategy, he knew what was expected at, all the way at the waiter level, we might consider that person it's operational level. Uh, he used his budget to build a, a basic boardwalk to allow this couple to have a, a dinner on, uh, on the beach like everyone else was doing. So I think that's a great example of how we can connect this stuff through flight levels, through looking at metrics uh, at every level and having coherence between them. Uh, Just imagine your colleagues, perhaps even yourself, if you were able to work in that level of freedom and have that meaningful connection to the higher level work at the strategy level. I think that's really powerful for, for our people. Okay, typically our board show, this is you know my experience, your mileage may vary. There's lots of whip going on, work in progress, all these different individual boards. And probably it's, it's more than people can handle and people overburden. What happens is this, this kind of just grows and it becomes this monster across organizations. I've worked with very few organizations who actually know all the work in progress. Uh, and so you've probably, you've probably seen Klaus's quote here, but the idea is that by starting at the strategy level and connecting everything to it, we're able to get a, a handle on this. This is a, a great killer of productivity and, and um, performance and people's engagement and work, um, really overburdening because too much work, uh, work in progress. This allows us to see it. If, you know, if there's, one, if there's one metric that you can uh, create coherence through the entire organization, maybe start with the work in progress. It's actually, it's, it's, it's not some kind of esoteric thing, you can see it you can manage it and you can connect it, right? So um, I think taking Klaus's words to heart here through connecting these is really helpful. Okay, uh, another, another bit of wisdom from uh, Fun Moltke, uh, really, and this is for those of you who, who are coaching leaders or maybe leaders yourself, um, really the level of detail, the higher you go, the shorter and more general the order should be, right? And so just adding specificity uh, another technique that you can use in conjunction here is this idea of catch ball. So really working with having a bi-directional conversation up and down through the organization to make sure that we have a clear understanding of strategy at, for everyone in the organization at all levels. Okay, and again, that, that provides people ability to do stuff, to, to make decisions autonomously, but that are aligned to the higher level uh, of the organization's purpose. All right, so, it changes the conversation. It changes the types of questions that people should be asking. So contrary to the, the questions we had earlier, which were kind of a mix of people of concerns and maybe not uh, allowing people to work at the right levels, this changes the conversation. These are the kind of questions I, I think are more valuable for leaders than people working at these different levels. Um, and so even at the operational level, it changes the conversation. So yes, we're working operationally, but we're able to see the connection of our work. And that's a great um, point of engagement for people, a great source of dissatisfaction for people, not being able to see how is the day, day, daily work I'm doing changing anything? Does it matter that I showed up to work today? Um, having these things in, in proper order, having coherence uh, helps do that. Okay. And again, class, I don't know if I have to like pay you some royalty for quoting you so often, but you can let me know. All right. So, uh, what is the community? What's being communicated by these metrics at every every flight level? I mentioned how my work connects to and impacts the organization's purpose. A lot of people don't know. Uh, there's there's some really interesting research that people don't know this. <laughs> That's scary. We should we should be working to make sure people know how their work is connected and, and impacts things. Where to provide the most leverage? So if I'm a manager, if I'm a leader, where do I work? Um, the measurements by which we 
manage our, our experiments. Everybody's talking about experiments um, and the idea of experiment mindset. We don't just do them because we can, uh, but we do them because we're trying to move the needle on something. And so these are the, the things that these metrics at various levels can help us to, to work within. And then again, as a leader, uh, the minimal amount of specificity uh, that I need to provide in order to help others make aligned decisions. So uh, I heard someone recently, actually, if, if, you, if you have a control kind of mindset or maybe you're working with someone, the way you can kind of practice that is next time you go out to dinner, have the waiter uh, or waitress order for you. <laughs> see, see what kind of experience that is for you. That's kind of a, that'll kind of get you in the, in the uh, mindset for allowing others to make decisions. And the thing is, if, if you're not comfortable with those decisions, asking why, what do I need to make clearer at the higher levels, what level two, level three? And that's gonna be the thing that helps people, uh, help you calibrate your level of leadership. Uh, another, another tool you can use here is the leader back briefing, where it's quite explicit about declaring the explicit freedoms and enabling constraints that people have. I was working with someone the other day um, who said, what we really need is more enabling constraints. That's really interesting. That's, that's the work of leadership, higher level leadership, level two and level three. What are the enabling constraints? Um, if you don't have any, there, there are constraints. Now, whether we make them visible, whether we, we encode them in uh, our, our strategy or our, our um, you know, level two concerns, they're out there. And so we need to make them visible, transparent, uh, allow them to be enabling constraints rather than governing constraints. Okay, takeaways for tomorrow. Uh, maybe not tomorrow, maybe Monday. Maybe take Friday off. Uh, so think about your services and, and flight levels. So there's something called the Kanban lens that some people think about and talk about. Um, think about your services at those levels. What's going on? Agree on organizational goals. This can be difficult. People are always busy. It's hard to get people together. Uh, identify metrics at, at every level, leading and lagging. And then Go through that, you know, that coherence exercise, whether it's through X matrix or just putting it on the, the metrics cube and saying, right, are these things related? How are they, how is their coherence here? Maybe we're, we're tracking the wrong things. Be free to discard metrics. Um, make all work visible, back to basics, but then connecting all the work. So this is gonna allow us to see work in progress at every level and allow us to govern it uh, properly. And then, using cadences to inspect and adapt. So um, on the earlier slide, you probably saw the different, the strategy review, operations review, service delivery review, using those, those cadences, those feedback loops to inspect and adapt. Um, I think that's, I think I'll stop there. I don't know, uh, Ahmad, if I'm if reasonably within time, allow people to uh, think about all the, the crazy images I just showed. Questions, comments, corrections, Rocks tomatoes, as a friend of mine likes to say. <laughs>